All right. So welcome, everybody. And tonight, I'm so excited. So Chris Vondermaden is back with me. He is the director of the Crystal Healing Institute um, at Mind Piranha Academy. And I'm very excited to have him back with me. It was so awesome when he was here with me four weeks ago and we had so much fun and so we decided that we wanted to do it again and have more fun and so what we decided that we were going to do um tonight is we were going to just share um with everybody how to pick the stones for your mala and i've had that question come to me a lot and you know i've said this a couple of times but there really is no wrong way to choose the stones for your mala and chris and i um, both have a different process and we're going to do a crystal a mini crystal reading for two different people tonight just so that everybody on the workshop can kind of see what each of us does and everyone can kind of go through that experience and um you know it's really about allowing yourself to connect with the frequency of what it is that you're wanting to create in your life whatever that is whatever you're wanting and desiring then if you can allow yourself to get into a place where you're vibrating at that frequency where you're at that level then you can attract whatever you're desiring into your life so for me i have a particular process that i go through um, when i'm making malas for people where i ask them questions and you know, I will just share, like, there really is no wrong answer because sometimes people come to me and they're like, well, I wanted to fill out your questionnaire, but I saw the Molly you posted the other day and I, I love that. That's the one I think I want. I really want that one. And what I would say to that is that if that's how you're feeling, then your body is obviously being drawn to that for some reason. You are being drawn to that for a particular reason. You may not have any idea why. And once I would share with you more about that particular stone and what is really involved with that particular stone, it may make more sense to you. So again, it really doesn't matter how you decide which stones it doesn't matter how you pick, how you go about picking what it is that you're what it is that you're wanting because for me i feel like whatever you're feeling drawn to whatever is calling you whatever is coming to you in that moment whether you don't know or you do know that's your answer that's what it is that you're looking for Chris, what do you what do you have to say about that? Uh, yeah, yeah, that sounds uh, good. It, it's th that that intuition. I mean, every everything you read about crystals is ultimately you know follow your intuition, and so there is a a knowingness that as energy we have that may not make sense to the conscious <laughs> regular mind, but there's you know the things we deeply feel and know that go beyond explanation. So definitely definitely follow that yeah 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 so i mean i would like to go ahead and just get started with the readings um and maybe we can have maybe we have well we probably don't have enough time to do everybody but maybe um we can pick some people that are interested in doing a reading is there anyone that would really like to um, have a reading with Chris. Juanita, okay. I'm going to I'm going to unmute Juanita. So Chris, if you want to go ahead and get started with Juanita. Okay. Okay. 
Um, and can I ask you, is there uh, an area that you are focused on, like a certain energy or vibration that you're wanting to bring into your life? I have several areas, but right now is, uh, oh gosh, I'm looking at my health right now and my brother's health. That's the area I'm working on right now. Okay. Uh, the, the stress and how it's affecting my everyday living. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I okay. have been having a lot of uh, anxiety and stuff. So, yes, I need to definitely work on that. Okay. Any, anything else you want to say about that? Okay. Um, well, with my brother, he has cancer. And with me, I'm uh, whew, I'm dealing with a history of psoriasis and stuff. So with my health and then connecting with his health and then my overday living is just like I'm depressed. Mm -hmm. It's like a depressing day every day. I can't get myself going is where I'm at right now. That, that that's a lot um yeah i feel that um and uh i mean the, the vibration that's coming up for me is um the, this so it's um lilac lapidolite is, is a stone that really captures this but this, this feeling of just what is it like to release what is it like to let go and that there's all this stuff that's like just weighing down on you um, and so being able to just set that down and breathe and let your mind clear and be, um, that's when, when you can just be, that's when the healing begins. It's, it's, and when you connect to the present moment, when you connect to who and what you really are. And right now there's all this stuff that's getting in the way of you feeling and remembering that place, that place of light and love that ultimately all of us are. Um, so it's, it's about letting go. And so lilac lapidolite really, um, I, I feel that one intensely, like that would just, you know, help you go through that process. Um, and then I can see the stone. I can't think of its name. It's, um, ah, I'm, I'm losing it. Pink, um, pink petalite. That's the other one. It's, it's another one that's going to help just kind of clear the head, but then awaken this, this loving, um, heart space. And so the combination of those two, lilac, lapidolite, and pink, petalite, will be just um, a great relief um, and return to that place of light that you are. Um, the last time that you spoke, and I wasn't in it, I had to, to the recording, and I was on a trip coming back from Las Vegas, Nevada, and we stopped at an Indian store. You know, we went to go put gas and stuff like that. And I happened to, or it caught my eye, was this stone that I found. Caught my okay. eye of a crystal mm -hmm. stone. And I thought about you. And why I got it, I don't know. I just bought it because it just kind of like, it would drew to, it drew to me or I drew to it. So that's what I had gotten from there, thinking of your last one. Awesome. So I do carry this along with me everywhere. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why? I don't know. Is, is that a quartz? I couldn't see it. Quartz. I don't know. Let me turn on my light. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you could see it. Let me look. I don't know. It's, it, to me, it looks like a crystal. You can see right through it. Okay. See yeah. how you, you know. I would guess and, it's and quartz. It just, mm -hmm. but, but and I don't you... buy them. Okay. Go ahead. 
Oh, <laughs> one of the things um, you can do with that is, um, you know, any stone you have or any picture of a stone you have, you can hold the quartz to the even just a picture on your computer screen. And that energy will, will then pass through the quartz. So it's like it, it tunes the quartz to that frequency. So any any stone out there, you can just kind of feel that from the quartz with just a picture. So that's really um, one of the uses for, for quartz. Quartz is kind of, it's known as the master crystal, but um, lots of uses. But, but yeah, really cool that that shows you. Yeah, I was really surprised. Is there anything else you want me to talk about? I give somebody uh, else a <laughs> Sure, sure. Um, Chris, can you say the second, the lilac lepidolite, and then what was the other stone? It's a pink petalite. Petalite is P E T A L I T E. Awesome. Okay. Um, all right. Very cool. Awesome. And Juanita, I'm going to look those up for you. Okay. And I'm going to see what I can, uh, what I come can up with. Come up with. Okay. Okay. Um, Thank you, Chris. Um, all right. So who wants to go next? I'm going to do the next one. Who wants to be the lucky person? <laughs> Come on now. Maureen, okay, I think I just saw you raise your hand. <laughs> yeah, that was a raise. <laughs> All right. Well, this will be perfect. I don't even need to send you the questionnaire. <laughs> I didn't even look at the questionnaire, so I don't know what the questions are. Well, you're gonna you're about to find out. Okay. Um, okay. So my first question would be, what is your, I, I know that you have a mala already, and so, and I know that you're wanting to make one for yourself. So what is your interest in creating your own mala? Why do you want to do that? Well, I'm going to do it with my daughter. So I think the experience of making memories with her and just experiencing your class and thinking about it and, you know, getting into the whole process is what's appealing to me. Okay. And, and then to end up with something special is I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Um. And then what is kind of your focus right now in your life? You know, like what would you say um, would be a top priority, a top goal for you right now? <laughs> well, the last five years, my vision boards have all had travel and finding the love of my life. So okay. I guess those two things are... I'll find the love of my life while I'm traveling. <laughs> that sounds fabulous. <laughs> um, and then why are those goals, traveling and finding the love of your life, why are they so important to you? My whole life I've loved adventure. So when I think of uh, adventure, I think of travel. And just from what I experienced this summer, I know that that's what I'm all about. Mm -hmm. I was walking down those streets in Morocco and I was like, just smiling ear to ear. This is me, this is, this is what I'm all about. Mm -hmm. So I was one with the world at that point. So I wanna do more of that. But I also would love to find a love again yeah you got a stone for that <laughs> there's a stone for that <laughs> <laughs> sign me up <laughs> so what traits 
do you feel you would need to embody in order to manifest the love of your life? What traits? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I know it's all about loving yourself first. So, and I've been doing that now for a long time. <laughs> I don't, I go to dances, I have fun, I have a big smile on my face, and I feel like somebody is going to see that and just be attracted to it and just know that we click, you know? So I'm right now taking care of myself first. It's all about me. I love that. I love that. So what I'm getting for you is um, yeah, what I'm getting for you is a stone called rhodonite. Ronanite. And I'm just going to open so that there's some stuff in it that I really want to read. Um, so the reason that I love this stone, there's so many stones that I love so much, but I really love this one and I'm very drawn to it because it is all about love and it's all about love from a standpoint of outwardly giving love there is a very similar stone that i also love called rhodochrosite um, and that is all about internal love and self-love and really self-forgiving and self-accepting and really giving yourself so much love and mm -hmm. in, the, in the same it's a very similar stone it's a very similar color it's in the in it's um similarly spelled however it's different in the fact that it's all about compassion and giving and already knowing that you have a deep love for yourself mm -hmm. and knowing that and feeling that and experiencing that and accepting that and then this stone allows you to get into a place where you're giving that love out where you're getting to a place where you're so comfortable with yourself and you're so comfortable with the love that you have within you that you can very comfortably give it very freely without worrying, without being concerned that you're going to get hurt, without being concerned that it's not going to be reciprocated, without having any any attachment to any of that it really just allows you to be in a space where you can give because there's so you have so much of it to give and you know that and you can feel that and you can see that and you can get in a place where it feels good to give it away without having any expectations of anything in return, regardless of what happens, just being in a such a comfortable space that you can give it out and not be attached to any of the outcome of giving your love out. And it also is attached to self-worth. Self-worth? And you, it's very much where you, you have a lot of love for yourself and you have a deep compassion for yourself. But every once in a while, there's this question of, of your worthiness, your mm -hmm. own personal value. And so this stone allows you to really get in touch with that, get in touch with your 
self-worth and your self-value and know your value, know your worth, know what you're bringing to the table so that you can step into that space of just freely giving everything away that you have, just giving it away because it feels good to give it away and giving it away because you know there's a lot of value in giving it and that, that your love can help others. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. What color is it? Um, it is. I'll actually show it to you. It is kind of like, it's similar to Amazonite in the fact that it's um, variations in color. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's different colors of um, shades of pink, pink and some black and some creamy colors. Mm -hmm. Pretty. Yes. Very pretty. So that will be what I will be sending you for October 7th. Awesome. Do you have any questions? No, thank you. Okay. This was good. Yeah. Um, okay, so we have, a, oops, we have a little bit more time. Does anybody, anybody else want to be brave? Carmen, I think Carmen or Eva, either of you? Carmen? Did I see you raise your hand, Carmen? <laughs> Did I make you raise your hand? Do you want to? You didn't make me raise my hand. <laughs> okay. Do you want to do a reading? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Chris, do you want to do a reading for her? Yeah, okay. So um, anything in particular that you're focused on right now? I am. I am getting ready to do um, a second degree course for uh, Reiki. And so I'm kind of on a journey of wanting to become a Reiki master and really work with that type of energy healing and kind of putting myself out there as an energy healer. Um, because I haven't really, I've been kind of keeping it to myself a little bit. All right. Anything else you want to say about that? Um, well, I'm just really drawn to that type of healing itself, you know, working with the energy. And I'm really um, glad that I found you and Sarah Ann to learn more about crystal energy and how to use crystals with healing too. So um, that might be something I learn more about as well. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, and so if you were, say you already had your Reiki certifications and mm -hmm. were kind of living that life that you envision right now, um, can you tell me about how that would feel? What would that feel like to be there right now? Well, I feel myself grinning ear to ear and just, it just feels so freeing, you know, and not only is that energy work helping me, but I'm helping others, you know, and, and teaching more people about how they can use that energy work to heal their bodies. Cool, cool, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and so like when I'm just kind of focused on you, I'm getting a, like the first stone that shows up is like a, a third chakra stone. So something like um, citrine. Um, could be citrine, a higher frequency of that might be Agni Gold Danbrite. Um, but, but this idea of a very just kind of, you know, 
bodily will in this reality kind of vibration um, is the first thing that shows up. And then I started feeling something like Dan Bright. Uh, so Dan Bright is this really high vibration, um, open hearted kind of energy. And when you combine those two vibrations, so kind of in the body um, will, the magician archetype of citrine with this um, high vibration coming down through the heart, um, those two create kind of what you call the hollow bone, what, what um, the Native Americans talk about standing with one foot in this reality and one foot in the spiritual realm and, and being a conduit, being a hollow bone for those currents to flow through. Um, but that combination of citrine with, with Danbarite really just kind of, I feel that that, that is, that's like, yeah, where, where you're, where, where you're headed. So. What, what color is the Danbarite? Uh, Danbarite is, it, it's a clear, let me see if I have some up here real quick. Yeah, here we go. I've got crystals everywhere, but um, <laughs> here's an example of Danbarite. It's okay. got a, a characteristic like a uh, chisel blade, but um, mm -hmm. it's um, it is uh, amazing, amazing healing energy. Cool. Yeah. I really like that. I'll have to cool. find some. <laughs> I love that. Me too. I have some citrine as well. So that's interesting. Okay. You said that. <laughs> Carmen, I'm going to a gem show this weekend. So I'll you are? Watch. Yeah, I missed the one that they had in Denver. I wasn't, I was out of town, but. <laughs> I'll, cool. I'll look for that and see if I can find it. All right. Sounds good. And Thank you, Chris. Mm -hmm. I love that. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Carmen. Um, I think Eva is packing, so I won't bug her too much. <laughs> um, so, um, thank you for everybody for, for willingly volunteering <laughs> and participating in the readings. It was so fun. Eva, do you want to do a reading quickly? I'm going to take that as a no. Um, <laughs> so, all right. So thank you, everybody, for being willing to share and being open. Um, I hope that was helpful to everyone and gives you a little bit of an idea as to, you know, my process and Chris's process and, you know, kind of gives you the idea that there's really um, – there's really no wrong way, right? And it really is all about connecting with whatever it is that you're looking to attract, whatever it is that you're looking to bring into your life. And, you know, there, there are several stones out there that can do or bring about similar experience, experiences for you guys. And so, you know, Chris and I are always available. We're resources. If you guys ever need anything or are looking for anything, please feel free to reach out to either one of us. Um, we're happy to help you figure out a stone or you know, beads or you know, whatever it is that you're looking for so that you can get into that vibrational frequency that it, you're looking for so that you can manifest and attract what it is that you're really desiring and really allowing yourself to get in touch with what it is that your heart is desiring. So with all of that, I'm going to open it up. And does anybody have any questions or comments that they would like to say this evening? Unmute everybody. I do. Chris, I, ha I got some smoky quartz. So I'm getting ready to do your class. <laughs> oh, good. Awesome. Awesome. Smoky quartz. That's awesome. I love that. 
anyone else? Um, so before we go, I just want to say that um, I'm doing an online mala making workshop on on October 7th. Initially, I was going to do it on October 7th, but I have three people that are registered, Juanita, Maureen, and Megan, and they're not available to do it at the time that I was going to do it. So um, I will be getting in touch with the three of you, and I may be changing the time and or day and time. Um, so if there's anybody else that's interested or wants some more information about doing the mala making workshop, please reach out and we can figure out a time and day to get everybody squared away so people can learn how to make their own malas, um, if that is something that you want to do. And then also, I will be doing another online workshop on Wednesday, October 11th at 6 30 Pacific Standard Time and for that workshop I'm really going to be talking about um, picking your stones based on physical and or emotional illnesses or um, challenges that you might be facing so I'm just going to really talk about how the two are really connected. And I'm going to share that if you pick, if you have a physical ailment that you're facing or that you're dealing with, then there is always an underlying emotional challenge that you're facing. I shouldn't say always, but the majority of the time, it is my belief that that is what is happening, that we have some sort of emotional pain that our body is processing and handling. And sometimes that emotional pain is, is too much and the physical pain is easier for us to handle and deal with. So it comes out through the form of physical pain versus us having to process and handle the emotional pain. And so, there, there are some resources that I have that allow me to really look into whatever the physical pain or the physical challenge that someone is facing and what emotional issues could be related to that. And then I use that, both of those informations to really do the research on what stones and crystals could be the most beneficial for you. So I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into that and I'm going to really just kind of share with everybody how I go about doing that and, and the resources that I use. So they're obviously available to everybody, not just me. So I will be sharing all of that information with you guys and I'm totally going to open it up to questions if anybody has anything that they're struggling with that they want to discuss and share and talk about and have me recommend a stone or a crystal or beads that would be beneficial or helpful for whatever it is that you're handling. And we can kind of go through that next or on October 11th as well. So that is what I will be doing on October 11th.